This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Adrian Brody, um, co-director slash subject of Stone Barn Castle, which is premiering here at South by Southwest, a documentary about your own journey in transforming a, I don't know what to describe it as, like a Stone Barn Castle into a more um, up-to-date Stone Barn Castle. Um, the first place I want to start with, and this is as somebody who's from outside Hollywood, but why on earth would you want to let the world sort of see your life in such an intimate level? I imagine like you have fucking TMZ and shit always on your back. Like it seems yeah. like why would you want to let them in even further? My mom asked me the same question on the way into my interviews this morning. Um, and I don't have an answer for that in, in, I do actually. The The reality is um, I'm an artist and my work as an actor is really um, shedding my own um, self-consciousness and connecting with uh, with others and conveying emotions truthfully and my the work that I do to prepare is to ensure that I can do that truthfully as best as I can. And even though I have a character to hide behind, in all the movies you've seen me in, you're seeing my own ability to show my own flaws as the character, my own vulnerability. Um, and I am a shy person. I, I Believe me, it's not my interest to just, I'm not a showman, I'm not a, like that, and I'm I'm gregarious, but I'm not, I'm private, and I'm um, the objective. I feel is to share something that I feel that is universal amongst all of us, which is um, a sense that we are so aligned in our quest for a sense of home, and I feel that, and it's not my responsibility to change perception, but I do feel that perception is skewed with regards to what is encouraged in TMZ and all that element that you referred to. Um, it is not the truth. And I think what this shows is um, a very introspective, authentic, and honest portrayal of a man with a dream who goes and fulfills his dream. And I've taken all the other complex elements of my life out of that and I'm willing to share that as an artistic endeavor. It's, I mean, it's a very amazing, like, transformative journey. I mean, it was, I think, seven years by the end of it. Um, but <laughs> as somebody looking in from the outside, it seemed like such an exhaustive process. The thing that, the parallel that came to my mind was the money pit that Tom Hanks it, it movie. Totally my mind as well, many times. <laughs> what what was it like in terms of going through this journey? I mean, obviously it's an incredible um, space. Um, the work you did on is amazing, but it's also, were there, like, how often were you just like, fuck it, I'm out? Like, this is like... I, um, I, I think don't if I could have been out, I would have been out early. I mean, I, I, I just... It's not entirely true because I'm, I'm really... I really am tenacious. I really do not like something to beat me. I don't like to be overpowered by something that even though it's there are myriad obstacles that are just crushing me I couldn't let it prevail and I don't know what that quality is. It's helped me in a lot of ways in life but at the same time um, I've obviously spent an enormous amount of resources and energy and my life my life devoted to this project. So I am really grateful that we have a memoir of that. I'm, I'm immensely grateful for that because much of that is forgotten subconsciously and partially deliberately because the journey was too difficult. But I think it's vastly entertaining. I think people can learn from my mistakes. <laughs> and, and I think, again, that optimism and naivety is is 
also another universal thing. I think people see something that they love. They, you know, they can kind of, they're ready. They can kind of attain it. They go for it. And then it's vastly more complicated than they anticipated. So one of, one of these sort of, um, and I, I think you could easily do like a seven up type thing uh, with this since it seems like there's so much work still to be done. But um, what one of the major events in the course of the story was this photo shoot that you do as part of the early time at the, the house. In retrospect, I, I mean, without gaining too much of a personal level or whatever, do you think that doing that was damaging on both the personal level and possibly in terms of the planning for the overall construction of the house because you focus so much on certain appearance elements instead of having to do those infrastructural things and stuff like that, so to speak? It's a, it's a wonderful question. Uh, I feel that it was necessary at the time and it kicked a lot of things into gear and um, the full renovation was not something I was really, uh, that was solidified in my mind. I wasn't necessarily going to pursue that. Um, you know, I had people in my life who were, who were very optimistic as well and who have done certain renovations. And, you know, I thought it was doable. It would be simpler. Uh, I knew it would be an enormous expense, but I figured let's get it done and, and you know, benefit from it all being done and I'm young enough to go tackle this. But I, when I even first bought the place, I didn't necessarily think I would renovate that whole structure. I didn't think I'd have to repoint every stone in this vast stone building to uh -huh. keep the structural integrity, to keep the water out. I didn't know a thing about any of it. I was just so taken with it as a work of art, as a triumph, built in late 1800s by an engineer. There were tunnel systems. It was every kind of childhood fantasy I could have. And it was in New York State, my home, you know, where I grew up, and you know, I could drive to the city. I felt like this is a dream. And the reality is it was just hell, hell to try and just keep it together. And, and um, so that was part of it. Now, it added a lot of conflict and a lot of problems in my life. And, uh, um, um, but that's life. And that, I think that's also what the documentary deals with is that life happens. You set out to do things. We, we have relationships. They don't work. We have, you know catastrophes that happen, we have beautiful things that happen, and you must keep moving forward. Well, wasn't there that, was it the Lenin quote, life happens while you're making other plans? Like, I mean, it feels very much emblematic yes. of what occurs in this film. Yeah. Um, and again, some, you don't have to get into too specific of details with this, but I was curious, I mean, there's a period at which you get depressed and you sort of leave for two years and come back. But because this is such a massive endeavor, were there ever times where you had to be like, I need to take a movie <laughs> to sort of underwrite what I'm doing here? Because, uh, because I mean, obviously you have a lot of in artistic integrity, but this is like, I, mean, I think at one point you said there were like 35 people or something working on this house. It could not have been cheap. No. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful that I've always tried to live within my means, even from the earliest part of my career, I lived in a really dumpy apartment. I lived in an apartment for $375 a month in LA. I always had a, you know, a used car that I fixed myself that I, you know, I did my own body work. I did, you know, everything, you know, I managed. Um, and I can relate to why people might take a job for the money, but None of, <laughs> none of the jobs that were lucrative were really worth the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So I could not, you know, it was never, you know, a game changer, a life changer, uh, and a role that I felt that I can do with integrity. 
the beauty and the problem with being an actor is that, at least for me, is that it's so damn personal that you can't fake it. You can't sit here and represent something that is inauthentic to me. I can't put myself in the shoes of a character that I can't relate to because I'm offered a job. I have to find something that works for me. And, and I've, prior to this house and through it, I've passed on many conventional projects that didn't appeal to me and did random movies with first-time directors or uh, small art house movies. And, and that's been the journey. You know, I did make seven movies to, yeah. to, to, to handle this where I could have made perhaps one of the, the wrong ones. But, yeah. you know, I, I work hard. I work hard and I, I you know, I, I managed it. You know, I basically managed it. I mean, you speak a lot about your artistic integrity and drive and all that stuff, which is really uh, fantastic. Um, what is it like to sort of see yourself on screen, though, in a personal capacity? Because, you know, when you watch a movie that you've been in, it's like, oh, I'm being that person in that movie. But this is like you actually but being... it's not. Yeah, I know. Uh, this is far more revealing, clearly, and revealing to me e even. Uh, um... Um, it's fascinating. It's fascinating, really. Uh, it's kind of like if you have a nude scene in a movie, it's stressful. And you know it's coming on the schedule. And you work it up in your head and doesn't just require physical nudity, but intimacy and intimacy that needs to be honest in front of strangers. It's a very strange facet of making a movie. And then you do it. And you are liberated. And you realize that you're strong and you have the capacity to be fearless. And that is very empowering. And it is a necessity to do what I do. You, I have to constantly push the limits of what I'm willing to expose to myself, of myself, to be able to share that truth. And so it's really not that dissimilar. And the journey... is real. It's, it's, it's not something to be ashamed of. And um, I, I agree it's complicated. And I agree that some people will not see the beauty of the message that I'm trying to convey, and not perhaps learn from my own mistakes, or not see how similar we all are. But that's not my problem. I can only give what I feel is valuable to people and that many people seem to appreciate. And I benefit from that too. I benefit from that exchange. I mean, obviously this is something that has been in, in the works for at least seven years because it starts off with footage of you going to visit the Stone Barn Castle before you even began work on it. Um, at what point did you really think about, I want to have this be something uh, that I release to the general public versus this is something I artistically want to do for myself or this is just something I'm curious to document for my own history because it's interesting? Well, we all knew that it would have some form of some life, some life to share it. I mean, I didn't think I would just stockpile footage. I don't think I would have expended even more resources to compile a narrative story that, that uh, you know, relayed the, the whole journey. I, I, um, I think there are a lot of elements that, that are really interesting, and along the way they were 
it was very apparent to me that that it would make a great story the, to share, and everybody involved knew that. The key is whittling away at it and finding what that journey is. And you don't know what that journey is because you're on it. And it has to reach some level of completion, whether it is failure or a physical completion of a renovation. But it, there is an end within that. And I had to ride it out to then construct the story. And um, it only really dawned on me basically yesterday or so that I'm actually inviting the audience into my house. <laughs> that I had to kind of block that aspect out in order to just say, it's the same way I have to do my work. Like yeah. I don't think about all the people that are going to be watching the movie as I make the movie. I keep as many people out of the room as possible so that I can be as uh, intimate and vulnerable as possible. And then I'm willing obviously, to, to share that. So the film is Stone Barn Castle. Do you know what the release plan is? We're working on that, okay. all of that. Um, yeah. So do you have a Twitter or anything that people can keep up to date or a website for the film that people might want to... No, I'm not as, I'm not as uh, so together. So Google, Google that shit, basically? I guess so. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think that once we have a release plan, then I will, I will collaborate with the the people who are smarter than I am about that stuff, and then we can, you know, release information on how you'd see the movie, and hopefully there'd be some kind of, um, you know, marketing budget to, you know, make it make people aware of it. Any other projects you want people to keep their eyes out for you? Oh well, there's a lot going on at the moment. I'm trying to like, uh, I'm working on some. I, I produced a film that we, uh, my company raised financing for a movie that we shot in New York called Manhattan Nocturne that'll hopefully come out this coming year and did a wonderful film with Selma Hayek uh, called September's of Shiraz about a family that's a husband was taken away from his family in, uh, in Iran during the kind of changing of when the Shah is uh, overthrown and the changing of the government and the, um, it's a beautiful film that uh, Wayne Blair directed um, there's several other movies that are in the pipeline. Sure, but, IMDb yeah. has a list. IMDb, of all yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Adrian, and best of luck with both the home and your future projects. Thanks a lot. Appreciate that.